Alright, this video is going to be about just a little trick I learned about how to handle pain. And this goes for physical pain or like emotional pain. So, I forget. I couldn't even tell you exactly where I heard this, but it was a long time ago. It was probably in a book I was reading. Um, I just don't remember which one. But I remember hearing it and thinking, wow, that's, that, let me try that next next time I'm in pain. So... What it is, is, um, so most people's reaction to pain is they try to ignore it and just pretend it isn't there. And that is the exact opposite of what you should do. What you should do when you feel pain, well, first of all, you got to realize what pain is. What is pain? Pain is a signal coming from your brain and or your body that's telling you that something is not right, something is wrong this needs attention and what you're doing is you're not giving it attention so it's going to keep trying to get your attention it's just a signal from your brain it's a signal we don't like (laughs) but it's a signal nonetheless so and it's trying to get your attention to a specific area whether it's physical or emotional or mental whatever but what you do is you don't ignore it you focus on it you give it the attention that it's looking for So let's say you bang your head on on a brick wall or something. (laughs) Um, An example I can come up with, someone I was working with one time, he was trying to pick something up, and it was right next to this big trailer that we carried a lot of heavy shit in. And when something, he shot up and rammed his head right on the trailer, and I could tell he was in pain. And I was like, dude, what you do is don't, don't ignore it, focus on it and watch how it just kind of dissipates so what you do is you focus in on you try to focus in on the exact problem whatever it is focus in on it figure out exactly what the cause of the pain is and then kind of imagine your body healing it itself now just just the just the act of focusing in on it is going to make the pain less. Watch. Next time Next time you feel some sort of physical pain, focus in on it and try to picture in your mind exactly what the problem is. Once you can try to figure out exactly what the problem is, start imagining your body doing what it needs to do to fix that problem, to heal it. Um, and I've heard stories of, of ancient warriors and shit, ninjas and stuff, using this meditation to to literally cure major problems like you ever seen that movie ninja assassin at one point he ends up fighting like 20 ninjas at once he gets hit with a bunch of chinese stars and gets cut a bunch of times at one point they're they're bringing him back to their fort to um execute him basically and he's in the trunk of the car using the the nine hand seals to meditate and heal all his wounds. Now, do I believe that people could do it on that level? I don't know. I I know one thing, that there's things happening out there that are beyond what we can comprehend and understand, and the mind is a powerful thing. So, if you don't know what the nine hand seals are, you should Google it and learn about it, because, you know, here's the thing. A lot of these ancient philosophies and stuff... They've been around for thousands of years. Now, modern man pops up within the last 200 years. Oh, we figured everything out. We know everything. Oh, that that ancient wisdom, that's stupid. That's yeah. like, you know what? You're stupid. <laughs> like, if you think modern man has everything figured out, you must be motherfucking blindfolded or blind, deaf, and dumb. I, I mean, look at the look at the society you're in. You live in a you live in a motherfucking parking lot and and you're robbed of every penny you generate just about just so you can barely cover food and rent so you know modern man is modern man don't ain't as smart as he thinks he is so i pay a lot of attention to like the ancients and stuff but so but yeah the point is you've got to focus in on it and i believe that this is a Everything is in your mind. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Go on my Patreon if you want the real details. But everything, everything is in the mind, and we're going we're going over some real interesting stuff on Patreon that 
anyways, you go on my Patreon if you want to know about that. But so now, when it comes to emotional pain, it's the same. It's the same. Um, it's the same thing, basically. You've got to focus in on it, and it's you know, it's it's hard to focus in on emotional pain because it, you don't want to feel it. But here's the thing: it's there, so you got to deal with it. So now, for me, it's a funny thing for me because I don't. I couldn't even. The last time I was sad, I. I I don't know. I'll watch a movie and something sad will happen or whatever. But in my head, I know it's a movie. I know it's not real. You know what makes me the saddest <laughs> is, is actually animal documentaries. When I see like, you know, like a, one of the saddest things I've ever seen was a baby jackal got killed by hyenas. He wasn't a baby. He was about, he was a juvenile jackal. So a jackal is... Um, almost like a fox they're like a, it's like a bigger version of a fox they they live on the serengeti plains in africa they're one of the hunter slash scavengers out on the serengeti plains it's a jackal they're they're not as big as a hyena but they're a lot bigger than a fox the it's a formidable dog type predator um but so this one jackal ended up it just when it when it was born, it was just a very brave little jackal. The thing had balls of steel, and it used to get itself into a lot of trouble. And then at one point, it lost its front leg. I forget how. Oh, I think it was getting attacked by a hyena. And then the other jackals jumped in and saved it. But it lost its it lost one of its front legs. And this little jackal was turning out to be a total alpha. He was going to be leading the pack at some point. But now that he had three legs he couldn't go out on the hunts anymore he had to stay in the den because he was no good out on a hunt you'd be amazed how complex some of these animal societies are but so now this juvenile jackal who was look he 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 was on his way to being the alpha the leader of the whole pack but he lost his paw because his bravery backfired on him that time but their community animals the jackals they brought him back food from every hunt. He's one of them. This is animals are amazing. So when they would go out and hunt, they would always bring him back food, and he'd be like guarding the den, guarding whatever puppies were born or whatever. It's amazing how complex their little societies are. These these animals out in the wild. And so he was sitting there guarding the den. They were out on a hunt. He's waiting for them to to come back. And here comes. A clan of hyenas, a, a group of hyenas is called a clan. A group of lions is called a pride. A group of jackals is called a pack. A clan of hyenas comes up, and jackals and hyenas are enemies out out in the wild. They're they're competing for the same prey. Lions too. They're all competing for the same prey. But the hyenas come up, and they see this one juvenile jackal solo, and he waits until the absolute last second because he wants to guard the den. And then when he realizes they're coming, he runs for his life. And the hyenas chase him. And he's only on three legs. And the, the documentary stops pretty much right before they catch him. They, I, and I didn't want to see it. But that was one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. I was thinking to myself, this brave little animal... It's just not fair. It, like, look, look what he got for being, just for being a badass. It, you know what I mean? It's not fair. I, I, it really upset me. <laughs> it's upsetting. <laughs> it's literally upsetting me now to even think about it. But I was thinking to myself, it's just not fair, man. But here's the thing: I was young when I saw that, and I understand things differently now, and I understand that life, nature, can be very brutal. And that's just the way it is. And without the brutality, we wouldn't be as strong and smart as we are. So it does no good to ignore it. it you got to face it. The, the whole point in that story was just, it was just this, one of the saddest things I've ever witnessed in my life. And it made me sad. And I've been thinking about it on and off. Ever since I saw that, I must have been 15, 16 when I watched that animal show. Um, 
and I was thinking how unfair it is. But realistically, that's life. You know, we, it's the nature of this planet. It's a, it, it, it can be a brutal place. That's another reason when I hear vegetarians talking like, look, that works for you. But you know what? This, this planet is a brutal, it, it can be a brutal and a dangerous place. Now, eating animals is not a nice thing to do. But you know what? Every, this, the nature of this planet, it, deep down to its core, is kill or be killed. Everything is killing something in order to survive, even if you're eating vegetables. So, you're killing the vegetables. So, and the other thing is, you got to be a little hard in this world. Not too hard. Uh, that's another lesson I learned in my life. I was, when I was living on the street, I was turning into an emotionless machine, which is not what I wanted to be. I'm an emotional person, and that's one of the things that I think makes me interesting. But being out on the street and dealing with brutal circumstances for a long time, I, one of the reasons I did that was to toughen myself up, but I realized at some point I'm getting too tough. I'm turning cold, and I don't want to be cold. So fr from that point on, I started consciously making an effort to not be cold and to be a little nicer and to be a little more understanding and to be a little more emotional, emotionally involved. I was turning into this, you know, mean, angry person who didn't care to understand what anyone else was going through. Just, you're in my way right now, and I'll do whatever I got to do to get you out of my way. I, I, that's what I was turning into, and I didn't want to turn into that. And look, that, that road, where that road leads is just problems and you know, when you, when you, a, a lot of people think, oh, I need to be tougher, I need to be stronger, I need to stand up to this and that, and sure, you do, to a certain point, but if you keep going down that road, and you keep trying to prove, you can't fight everyone over everything, you just can't do it, otherwise, you're going to end up in jail with all the other dumbbells who fought everyone over everything because they never give an inch. And here you are now, locked in a cage with a bunch of people who are just dying to prove themselves. And now, the new thing is now you got to start using weapons on each other. It's like, do you really want to be in a place where you got to kill people over a friggin' 10 cent bag of noodles? You know what I mean? So, at some point, you got to realize that, and this is something I still struggle with, I can't I can't react to everything. And because there's a part of me that's like, well, you can't let him get away with that. But then, then it's like, you know what? What is it worth it? Uh, like, how far are you willing to take it? Like, in self-defense, I'm willing to take it all the way. I don't care. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let someone else take me out of this world. But when it comes to some stupid ego thing, I'm not willing to. I, I you know, I, I'm not willing to. Whatever. I, I'm not willing to. Um, if I'm not willing to take you out completely then I'd rather not even, <laughs> I'd rather not, you know what I mean, but, and that's, I think that's the best way to be, you know, like, if it's not worth, some things are worth going all the way, don't get me wrong, but they're few and far between, if, if it ain't that, leave it alone, you know what I mean, are you gonna roll around in the dirt, ruining your clothes, over what, you know, just so this dumbbell, this, this, someone you don't even know thinks you're tough, but there were times on the street where I thought to myself, like, I'm not letting this dude get away with this, bro. You know what I mean? I just, just for my own, I, I don't know, my, my own mental health, <laughs> I can't let that fucking slide. So, you know, uh, here's the thing. If someone's, really, like, really threatening me and trying to pose a threat and make me back down, that, that's how you're going to get me to... to to, to go at you, you know what I mean, but other than that, I don't care, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nice to everyone, I don't necessarily just respect everyone, I'm polite to everyone, but I, in my opinion, everyone doesn't deserve respect, you know, that's something that's earned, you don't just give it away to everyone, some people don't deserve respect, that doesn't mean you should be rude or impolite to them, but, um, anyways, I'm getting way off track here, 
this is why I end up making every video I make is like a half hour. But so, yeah, my whole point here is that don't ignore the pain. Focus in on it. Figure out exactly what the problem is, and then try to figure out how to heal it. Now, if you're not capable of doing that, maybe you should go to the mental health professionals who, in my opinion, aren't doing a very good job because most of the people in modern Western societies thinks they're mentally ill. It's even, you see people, they, it's like they, they want to be mentally ill. They want everyone to think that. I don't, I, I, I don't get it, but that's the, that's the type of upside down lunatic society we're in where it's like, it's a race to the bottom. Who can be the biggest victim? Who's got the most issues? Who's the most messed up? <laughs> it's like, what the hell kind of competition is that? <laughs> That's one competition I do not want to win. I don't want to be the most messed up. I want to be the least messed up. Call me crazy. <laughs> it's like, you're the crazy one if you don't want to be mentally ill in this society. That's how, that's how insane it's gotten. But look, you know, they, these are, it's hard things to conquer when, when you've been th thinking a certain way your whole life. It's hard, it's hard to just turn it around. But I believe you can because I've done it myself. I've changed my thinking on so many things that I couldn't even begin to go through them all. But my opinion has changed on so many things. Even, even stand-up comedy, now that I'm doing it again, I'm so much less bitter and angry and nasty now because I'm just happy to be doing it again. You know what I mean? Back when I was doing it in New York and I felt like I just felt so much pressure and I felt like I just had to just be so much better than everyone else. I don't have that anymore and I'm very grateful that I don't. I don't have, you know, now at the open mics, I'm nice to, I'm nice to everyone. I, I wasn't always like that. I used to be like, you know, I felt like a lot of them were just wasting everyone's time. Now, I'm thinking to myself like, if this is what you want to do, do it. I, the, who, who cares if everyone thinks you suck, <laughs> you know? If this is what's helping you get through your life, then, then keep doing it, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter, like, the, you know, it, just because you're not going to be the best at it doesn't mean you shouldn't try, you know what I mean? So my whole attitude has changed on that, and, and a lot of other things, too. Just the, you know, I'm the type where... I don't, I don't cling to anything. I try to be as open as possible. I don't, you know, everything I put on Patreon, I believe is accurate, but I am open to anyone proving any of it wrong. I'm open to debate. If you can debunk anything I'm saying, I'm open to hear it. And if it's wrong, I want to know. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I'm wrong, I want to know anything I'm wrong about. Don't ever feel like you shouldn't point something out to me. So... Um, I guess that's the end of this video. I don't want to just keep going and going and going. But there was, um, there was a comment on one of my videos that I do want to bring up. Now, this is off topic too, but... So someone made a comment that said, I think it was on my last video, and I responded to this out of anger, which I shouldn't have, because it's actually a really good question. Someone said, you say you have a high IQ, which I do. My IQ is around... 130, 150, between there, somewhere between there, pretty high, so he goes, you say you have a high IQ, then why do you live in poverty, <laughs> and when I saw the comment, I got angry, because I was thinking to myself, you have no idea, like, I've turned down fucking jobs where I was gonna make a lot of money, but I knew, I realized at a young age that money is not going to get me where I want to be. All the money in the world is useless if if you don't have, you know, if you if you don't have any life experience or enough backbone to to hang on to it. You know what I mean? You know how many rich people are out there who just get suckered out of their money because they feel like, "Oh, I'm privileged and I need to help everyone out." So everyone who everyone who just people, you know, just demanding their money, they just give all their money away. I realize that at a young age, if I make my money in the wrong way, it's it's just going to lead to me being, uh, uh, it, it's going to lead to a worse situation than poverty, you know? So, that's the answer to that question. Here's an example. I had a job 
where I could make a lot of money as long as I was willing to swindle families out of their money. I could have been making a few hundred dollars a day. This is, I was early 20s. I would have been rich. But, I, you know, I believe in God and I believe that God would have been offended by that. And, and as he should, I shouldn't, be, you know, it's, I didn't want to make my money that way. I'll put it to you that way. Then at another point, I was offered a really good job, but I realized in order to do this job, I've got to do something I'm not passionate about. I'm going to be making a lot of money, but, but it's not what I was put here to do. So I can do this job until I'm just as miserable as, as, as I can be, and then I'm going to quit that job. This is going to be 10 years down the line. And you know what? That's going to put me in the same exact position I'm in right now. So why not skip wasting 10 years, don't even take the job, and just continue from where I'm at right now, working on the street, doing my portraits, using my God-given gifts to make, to make a living. So that's why I live in poverty right now, because it's not just about making money for me. It's about making money with my God-given abilities and talents that... If it doesn't feel right, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to live my life feeling off about anything. I want to be doing what I feel I was put here to do. So look, if all I cared about was money, I'd be selling crack and I'd be a violent lunatic crack dealer out on the street and I'd be making thousands every day or I'd be selling other hard drugs. If all I cared about was money, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be ruining people's lives by selling them drugs and then killing any opposition over my t territory. That's if, if all I cared about was money, that's what I'd be doing. And I'd be making a whole lot of money. But you know what? Sooner or later, somebody would kill me or I'd end up in jail. So it's not just about money. It's about other things. And I hope every one of you realizes that at some point because there's more to life than just stacking up money and then then what you sit there at a big hoard of money that what good is it look a house is a house you don't need me personally even if i had 50 billion dollars i wouldn't buy some big huge mansion i live by myself what would be the point in that it, just to have a big empty space around me i don't want that if i had a bunch of kids and shit i'd have a nice somewhat elaborate house but i wouldn't get this huge ridiculous spread you know what i mean because it's a waste i it's inefficient to me it's stupid i, I would rather have a not just a nice little dwelling than a big huge then what you got to pay to have it all clean look i had a friend who was very rich his family had a big huge mansion what i realized was they spent 98 point five percent of their time in the kitchen and the rest of the house was just collecting dust so it, in the kitchen in the living room it's like there's no point in having a big elaborate mansion because the reality is it just sits there doing nothing and collecting dust nobody goes in any of these rooms maybe if they have someone over they show them around and oh here's all the cool things that's the only purpose it serves other than that it sits there not being used so Anyways, I guess that's the end of this video. That's how you handle pain. Focus in on it, figure out the exact cause of it, and then imagine yourself healing it. Because the mind is a powerful thing. It, it's more powerful than you realize. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. So I guess that's the end of this one. Everybody have a good one. I'm going to try to get a new video up on my movie channel within the next couple of days, maybe... I'll start doing some horror movies for Halloween from now until ha Halloween. I'll just do all horror movies, maybe, um, I guess. So, And then I'll link my Patreon in the description, too. So, everybody, have a good one. See you all in the next one. Oh, I'm going to be putting more stand-up up on the shorts, too. The, m the more I film, the, m the more I put up. So, everybody, have a good one. See you all in the next one.